Hey everyone, my name is Ali Tan, and I'm a PhD candidate at the Technion. And the work I'm going to present today about LRU versus FIFO has been done while I, I was an intern at IBM Research together with Danny, Effie, Ronen, and my supervisor, Roy. So this talk is about caching. And the basic concept of caching is where you have a big but slow storage and a smaller or faster one that can save only a portion of the items. Now, when we have an access and we could serve it from the cache, then we call it a hit. But if we can't serve it from there and we need to go to the real storage and take the item from there, then we call it a miss. If the hit ratio is high, meaning the portion of the excesses we sell from the cache is big, then it means we improve the performance of our system. Now, the heart of every cache is the caching policy, which decides which item we insert into the cache and which item we evict from it. In this work, we focused on FIFO, first in, first out, and LRU, least recently used policies. On both policies, we insert a new item into the cache and evict the oldest item in it. The only difference between them is on a hit. On FIFO, we does nothing, while in LRU, we move the item that requested to the tail of the list, and it is now considered as the newest item in the cache which means it will be evicted later. Both policies are very efficient and simple, and simple to implement. During the years, LRU considered better than FIFO, and we have here few papers from the 19th that say that in few ways, like LRU policy always perform better than FIFO, LRU is almost always superior to FIFO. The title LRU is better than FIFO. Under some model, LRU is better than FIFO. The practice and the question we are asking is does it still hold? Does LRU still outperform FIFO? So you are probably asking why not? And the reason we thought that something has changed is that these days the computing world deals with new types of workloads in a new scale. In the past, the focus was on file and block storage. But today, videos, social networks, machine learning, and object storage are a significant part of the data we are caching. The amount of data become bigger and bigger. And we cache not only disk data in memory, like in the old days, but also cloud data on persistent storage. Even the metadata, meaning the data used to handle the cache, no longer fits in memory. The example that motivates us to explore the subject was a system of hybrid cloud object storage. In this example, we have an unlimited amount of data on a remote hub and the limited local spoke that serves as a cache to improve the latency of the users. The spoke is limited, but even so, we expect it to serve hundreds of terabytes. Because of that, a big, part, a big part of the metadata, which is the list of items in the cache in our case, is expected to be on persistent storage. When the metadata is in memory, we consider the accesses to it negligible. But what happens when the metadata is too big for memory? We need to place part of it on persistent storage. And then those accesses have a latency cost. In C4 and LRU, we can always keep the head and the tail in memory and update it once in a while. So, accesses to there stay negligible. 
But in LRU, on a hit, we need to access an item that could be anywhere. And it comes with the latency cost of accessing persistent storage. Now, I don't want to get here into details, but we formulate this latency cost in a way that considers not only the cost of accessing the data, but also the cost of accessing the metadata that could be on persistent storage. This model is only an estimation and should give us an idea of the impact that these changes are going to make on the cache performance. What effect this formula is the ratio between the latency of the local cache and the latency of the remote. We assume that the latency of the cache and the metadata cache is the same because they both on the same persistent storage. To evaluate this, we extracted 99 traces from IBM public cloud object storage with hundreds of millions of accesses to more than hundreds of terabytes. Each trace is taken from a week of usage of a single bucket. You can see here some interesting details on the traces. On the left side, you can see the object sizes varying from less than one kilobyte to more than one gigabyte. In blue is the object count, many small objects, and in orange is the capacity they take. So little big objects take most of the place. On this side, we have a timeline of the accesses for each bucket, where you can see the frequency of accesses in each hour. You can see that in some bucket, there is a periodically accesses, like each day or each eight hours or something like that. Other, you have constant accesses, and other seems pretty random. We are going to publish this data and I'm not sure if at the time of the conference it's already published but you have a link here on the slides and in the paper where the data will be when we published it. Except from our data, we also evaluated on more traditional workloads. MSR or classification classes of block storage coming from Microsoft Cambridge. Sisto traces from Futisto, storage virtual machine system, and generated TPCC traces. You can find all of them on SNEA website. We simulated each trace with different cache sizes and different ratios between the latencies of the local cache and the remote storage. So here are the results for pure heat rate. Each row is a different cache size. Small is down 1% and here it's 30%. And for FIFA wins, it's green. LRU wins, it's red. And if they are pretty much the same, so we call it no winner and it's gray. And we can see here that even in pure heat rate, FIFA is not worse than LRU on almost half of the cases, no matter the case size. Yet, in pure heat rate again, LRU wins in about half of the traces. On the other hand, if we used our cost model, this time where the latency of the cache is 1 and the latency of the remote is 50, FIFA becomes much better and wins the majority of the traces. We repeated this evaluation for other ratios between the cache and the remote and other cache sizes. And in all cases, the pictures stay the same. If we look at the cost, FIFA wins much more cases and become a serious candidate to win LRU.
if you want to look more closely, we have this curve. Here on the x-axis, we have the difference between the hit rate of LRU and FIFA. So the left half is where FIFA is better in hit rate, and the right half is where LRU is better. The color is the cost. So again, the green is where FIFA wins, and the red is where LRU wins. Each dot is a trace. So here we have the MSR traces in yellow, the sister traces in purple, blue is TPCC, and the gray is our traces. So what you can see here is that all this half, and especially when the heat rate is high, and the impact of the LRU axis to the metadata is high, then traces that are here moving from LRU winds, if we're talking about heat rate, to FIFA winds when we talk about cost. And this is the big difference between the two options. So again, here we have only one configuration of 1 to 50 ratio of latency in 30% cases, but other configurations present in the paper. So after all, what are the main takeouts from this talk? First, it is no longer clear that LRU is better than FIFO. And in fact, in many occasions, FIFA is better. Second, hit rate doesn't tell the entire story, especially when the metadata does not fit in memory, and we should take the latency cost into account. We hope our traces can provide new insights and opportunities for your research. Feel free to use them. And that's all. If you have any follow-up questions, clarification you need, or help with the data, please contact us by mail. I want to take the opportunity to thank Effie, Danny, and Donnell for the nice summer we had at IBM, and thank you all for listening.